Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now on question number 12 from the specimen paper from the Cambridge International A level. This is a 9709 paper one, which is a pure mass one paper. And this is the last question on the paper. And here we have a diagram showing the curve with equation y equals x times x minus 2 squared. The minimum point on the curve has coordinates a0, and the x coordinate of the maximum point is is b okay so that's the minimum point and that's the maximum point here where a and b are constants we've got to first of all state the value of a now when a question says state it requires no working okay it requires absolutely you don't have to show any steps but for for us to understand why the answer is what it's going to be i know that i I'm gonna, i can state the answer straight away as x equals two okay or a equals two and we got the mark, and that's all you have to show. But of course, we have to understand how we got there. Right? We don't have to show the steps here, but for your understanding purposes, I'll explain to you how we get A equals 2. Now, first of all, if we look at this equation, we can see this is a cubic equation. The highest power will be x cubed if you, square, if you expand the bracket. And the x cubed term will be positive, so it's definitely going to have this type of shape. That's one thing. So we can see from it it's a cubic. Now, normally to find the turning points, which of which this a is the x coordinate of one of the turning points, you differentiate the equation and you equate it to zero, so where the gradient is zero basically. When you find the differential of this equation, um, that tells you the gradient function, and we see at the turning points the gradients are zero, and then you can find both the value of a and b from that. Okay. However, there's an easier way to find a from which you don't have to do any of those steps or take any of those steps, and that is by by noting that a is the point at which the curve touches the x-axis. And we know that the x-axis has the equation y equals 0. Because everywhere on the x-axis y equals 0. So for us to deduce that this is equal to 2, it's simply a case of equating this x times x minus 2 squared to 0. In which case we have two solutions, either, well, two solutions in fact there's um, what's called a repeated root here because we got x minus 2 squared equals 0 which means x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0 again it's x minus 2 is x minus 2 times x, x minus 2 um, x minus 2 squared is x minus 2 times x minus 2 you see so that means x equals 2 and then x equals 2 again so we have x equals 2 twice now that situation occurs when you get the same answer twice when that's called it's called a repeated root when the curve turns on the axis that's when you get this situation so whenever you see the square bracket that's the place where you'll have a repeated root that's where you'll see that the curve doesn't cross through the x-axis rather it turns on the x-axis so that's why just by looking at this equation i know that x minus 2 is a repeated um x minus 2 is a repeated fact factor therefore x equals 2 is a repeated root x equals 2 twice so just by looking at the fact that this is squared i know that uh, you know my roots are going to be x equals 0 and x equals 2 but this is a repeated root so that must be where it touches the x-axis and doesn't cut through it all right so when you have a single root that's where it cuts through the x-axis when you have a, re a repeated root where it's squared that's where it turns on the x-axis and we'll have another case when you have a root like for example if it was x minus 2 cubed Okay, then that would be a place where you have what's called a point of inflection. Where it turned, it doesn't, it, 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 it becomes zero on the x-axis, but then it, you know, it carries on the same um, gradient as before. Okay, that's called a point of inflection. Okay, so it doesn't turn, it cuts through, but there's at the point where it, where it touches the x-axis, the gradient is still zero. Well, that's a side point here for this question, but that's, how we can tell. So you got a repeated root x equals 2. Just by looking at the equation, you can you can actually just write that answer down. There's no steps needed at all for this part A, but hopefully that gives you an understanding of why that's the answer. Now for part B, it says calculate the value of B. Okay, B is the place where the curve turns. Okay, on the other, there's a maximum value there, right? So we want to find the, the uh, value of B, the x coordinate of this turning point. In order to do that, as I mentioned earlier, we have to 
think about the gradient of the curve. Okay, this time it's not turning on the x-axis. Right, so we'd find the gradient of the curve. So the gradient function is given, okay, by differentiating this expression. Now we have to first expand it in order to be able to differentiate it properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand the bracket inside. That's going to be, if you expand a square bracket, you square the first term. You, you multiply the, the two terms together, that gives you minus 2x. You double it, gives you minus 4x. And then you square the last term, that is going to give you plus 4. So fully expanded will be y equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. All right, so that's the equation in a form that's now easy for us to differentiate. Now to differentiate, find dy dx. So we multiply by the power, so that's 3 times x squared. Uh, and take one from the power, 3x squared. And then you multiply by the power, minus 8x. Take one from the power to the power of 1. And then this 4x becomes 4. You just drop the x, y, because there's a 1 here. When you multiply that by that, you get 4. You have 4x to the power of 0, and x to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So you're left with 4. So any x term, you basically simply just drop the x. And if there's a constant, which there's not here, the constant becomes 0. All right, so that's how you differentiate. So we know that... When the gradient, we know that at the point B, or we can say when x equals B, dy dx is equal to 0. Okay, when x equals B, we know dy dx is definitely equal to 0 because it turns at that point. So we can say that when 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 0, that's when we're going to find the value of x. So we need to factorize this. Now there's two methods we could use to factorize this. Um, I mean, in terms of, uh, we could just go ahead and factorize it, okay, just as we know how to. Okay, but there's actually a shorter way which I'll show you afterwards. So here, this is 3x squared, and this is plus 4. So we can find two numbers multiplied together to give us uh, 12x squared, okay, 12x squared. And um, when we add them, we're going to get minus, so the product is 12x squared, and the sum is minus 8x. So two numbers multiplied to give us 12 and add to give us 8. That's 6 and 2, right? 6 times 2. So it has to be minus 6x and minus 2x because they have to add up to minus 8x. So I'm going to take out the common factor from these two. That's 3x. Okay, and 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times minus 2 is minus 6x. And x times minus 2x uh, is... x times minus 2, sorry, is minus 2x. So we end up with 3x minus 2 times x minus 2 equals zero. Now, what did I mean by um, doing this without actually factorizing it? Well, what we could have done is the following. We know that x equals two, when x equals two at this point here, there is a turning point. So one of the solutions of this equation must be x equals two, in which case one of the factors of this equation must be x minus two, which means here we must have a minus sign because minus times minus is plus. That must be a 2, because minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. And that must be 3x, because 3x times x is 3x squared. So you can deduce it's 3x minus 2 by knowing that that is a solution. How do we know that solution? Because we know that one of the factors, okay, one of the, um, the solutions to this equation is x equals 2, because that's one of the turning points, right? That was the other turning point, x equals 2, that's the minimum point. That's one of the points where, where the gradient is zero. So we could have deduced this without actually having gone through the factorizing just by writing this down and thinking, what do we have to multiply by x to give us 3x squared? Well, that's 3x. What do we have to multiply by um, minus 2 to give us plus 4? Well, it's minus 2. And we can check 3x squared minus 6x minus 2x. That's minus 8x plus 4. So that means the solutions to this equation are when 3x minus 2 equals 0, or when x minus 2 equals 0. So this would be when x equals 2 thirds, and this is when x equals 2. Well, we know this is this is already a, so therefore we can say b must be equal to 2 thirds. Okay, b is 2 thirds, the x coordinate of the point at which they intersect, uh, at which the gradient is 0, sorry. Now, they didn't ask us to find the coordinates of the maximum point here. They just said find the value of b, which is the x coordinate of that turning point. So there we have the answer to part B. Now we're going to move on to part C. It says find the area of the shaded region. So we, we've deduced that this is equal to 2 here. We've deduced that this is equal to 2 thirds. I'm going to find the area of this region. So the area under a curve 
is given by finding the integral with um, of the equation y with respect to x between the limits between the places we want to find the area which is enclosed between this the shaded region is closed between x equals 0 and x equals 2 so I'll put limits of 0 and 2 here so I take our equation which is x times x minus 2 squared so we have x times x minus 2 squared with respect to x between 0 and 2 and that's going to be the area of our shaded region so this remember was and when you expanded this, you got um, x squared, because we're going to get ready for integration. So x squared minus 4x plus 4. Uh, minus 4, so this is x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. When you expand this, you get x squared minus 4x plus 4. But then when you multiply by x, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. That has to be integra integrated with respect to x between the values of 0 and 2. Okay, so when you integrate an expression, okay, we don't write the integral sign anymore once we've started integrating. We add 1 to the power, so x to the power 4, divide by the new power over 4. This one, you add 1 to the power for x cubed over 3, and this will be 4x squared over 2, and we'll see that the two cancels. We've got the limits between 0 and 2. So let's just finish that off. You're going to have here, this will be... Um, this will end up being 2x squared, by the way. So this is going to be 2 replaced into the x. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 4 over 4 minus 4 times 2 to the power of 3 over 3 plus 2 times 2 squared. And you're going to have minus 0. Okay, because you put 0 into all of these is going to be 0 anyway. So that's going to give us 16 over 4, which is 4 minus, this is 4 times 8 over 3. That's 32 over 3. Uh, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. So you have 12 minus 32 over 3, which is 36 over 3 minus 32 over 3, which is 4 over 3. So that's the area, 4 over 3 square units. There's the answer to part C of this question. Simple integration Okay, um, question here. You integrate between the limits of 0 and 2 to find the shaded area. All right, now for D, it says the gradient dy dx of the curve has a minimum value m. So we worked out what dy dx is. dy dx was uh, 4x cubed plus, let's just remember what it would be before we already found it. Sorry, 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. Sorry about that. 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. Okay. Now, they're saying that the gradient has a minimum value. Not the curve has a minimum value. The gradient has a minimum value. So we've got to think about the rate of change of the gradient. We've got to differentiate with respect to x the gradient function. Okay. Which basically this is d squared y dx squared that's called the second differential that tells us how the gradient changes so we can find out where the minimum of this gradient is when d squared when d squared y d, d, dx squared when the second differential is equal to zero we find the minimum so what is the second differential of this well it's going to be multiplied by the power take one from the power and the x term loses the the x and the constant term becomes zero so when 6x minus 8 equals 0, that x value will be the place where we get either the maximum or the minimum. In this case, you're going to have x equals 8 over 6. So x equals 4 over 3. Okay, 3x squared um, minus 8x plus 4, that's right. Okay, so x equals 4 over 3. So that is the x-coordinate of the uh, gradient, um, or the x-coordinate where the gradient function has its minimum. But we want to find the minimum value of the gradient. So we want to find when what dy dx is when x equals 4 over 3. That will give us the minimum value of the gradient. This is just the x-value for the minimum value of the gradient this tells us what x is okay where the gradient is the minimum 
So the minimum gradient value, dy dx, is going to be given by substituting 4 over 3 into our gradient function. So you have 3 times 4 over 3 squared, so it's 3x squared, minus 8 times 4 over 3, plus 4. That will give us the minimum value of the gradient. Okay, And for us to work this, this is 3 times 16 over 9 minus 4 8 so 32 over 3 uh, plus 4 so this 3 and this 9 cancels out that gives us a 3 so we're left with um, 4 and this is 16 over 3 minus 32 over 3 it's minus 16 over 3 so this is 4 is going to be basically if I multiply this by so it'll be 12 over 3 minus 16 over 3 and that gives us negative 4 over 3 so that's the value of m, the, the value of the, um, this is the value, the minimum value of the gradient, okay, and that's minus 4 over 3. Right, they didn't say justify why it's a minimum. If you wanted to justify why it's a minimum, you take the differential of 6x minus 8. It will tell you, you see that that will give you um, just 6, which is a positive value, therefore it's a minimum, okay. Uh, but there's no need for us to do that in this question. Don't tell us to justify it. So that that's a bit of a tricky one because um, you know they're not asking for the minimum value of the curve. They're asking for the minimum value of what of the gradient. So you got to find the second differential, all right, and put the value and find what the value of x is when that's equal to zero. Because when the second differential equals zero, you'll get the minimum or the maximum value of the gradient. Okay, so that's the answer to that question. Okay, so as you can see, the, the gradient has a positive value, it becomes zero, it has a minimum, it has a negative value. There's a certain point over here, okay, where it's going to reach maybe here or uh, over here, yes, somewhere over here, or maybe over here, here, here even it's going to become very, very, um, in fact, somewhere in this region here, it's going to reach its minimum value. Okay, it'll be negative. Okay, and that's when x equals 4 over 3. Okay, so that's somewhere between these values, as you can see. So the gradient is negative only between these two values. Somewhere between them, it reaches the smallest value. That's called the point of inflection. Okay, and that's when x equals 4 over 3. And the, the value of that gradient, uh, that negative gradient, the most negative gradient you can have, the minimum value of the gradient, as we found, is negative 4 over 3. Okay, so that's an answer to that question. Um, I hope that was clear. Some good understanding of graphs and differentiations is needed in this question. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Questions on the topics of uh, quadra of sorry graphs of functions and cubic curves and also differentiation. I'll put this under differentiation as well. And also integration. I'll put it over there as well. You'll find all of those, these topics um, in the different play, this, this question in those different playlists for those of you who are looking at things topic wise. And at the top of the page, you'll find um, a card that will appear from time to time, which will tell, take you to um, the um, video telling you how to use my channel in an efficient manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.